Hey guys, welcome to the garden. Tonight we are harvesting some stuff. There is uh, quite a lot out here that needs harvested and I realized I hadn't really done a harvest video yet. I had to pick a squash bug off my cucumber. Um, so I thought I would do one. I like to do these videos, but it's, usually it's just easier for me to just come out and grab stuff and go back in the house so but tonight we are doing a harvest video um, I have my basket out here I actually got this at an auction uh, last weekend yes and for two dollars and I absolutely adore it it has like a flat bottom and it is I just I just love it a little handle I just love it so I got my snips um, and we're gonna harvest some stuff. The first thing I'm gonna do is cucumbers. I have uh, quite a few of those to pick. So that's gonna be first. Then we're gonna move over to tomatoes. And we also will probably have some peppers to pick. And I think we, we might dig potatoes tonight. I have that one plant of potatoes left that I need to pull. So we might do that as well. So first thing we're gonna do is some cucumbers. My cucumbers this year, well, right now, these are the muncher. They have these like bug marks on them, but they're totally fine. Um, they're still just as delicious. They just look kind of weird. So um, if this happens to you, don't freak out. They're fine. Just wash them before you eat them and you'll be fine. Cucumber production has been crazy recently um i am noticing it is starting to slow down just a little i am still getting a ton off of these plants um this chinese snake if you watch the garden tour you saw uh, it's been attacked by something i'm thinking a squash bug that's probably what it was so this one will probably come out um, of the ground here in the next few days, and I'll probably re-sow it for fall. When I pick my cucumbers, I do go ahead and try to rub off any like spines from them, especially if I'm going to be picking more stuff, because I have had a cucumber like pierce a tomato before. So, just a little a little tip for you. Um, I am using snips tonight to pick these. Usually I don't. Usually I just kind of push the stem off with my hand. But tonight I'm using snips. The only bad thing about cucumbers is they like to hide and then they blend in with the plant and you don't see them. Like here's one that was hiding. So this, okay, so these are both munchers. This is the size I like to pick them. This is the one I just found. <laughs> so um, these are meant to be picked a little bit smaller. You can pick them any size and they're still really good, but they're meant to be picked a little bit smaller and then I just found this one. So, you know, it is what it is. So we're gonna turn over to this side of the panel now and I do see a couple salt and pepper. This is definitely my favorite cucumber of the year. I will definitely be regrowing this one. It is probably the best cucumber I've ever had. So three of those. I've been eating these just like eating them like apples. They're just so good. Okay, so cucumber haul looking pretty good. So now we are gonna go over into the tomatoes because I know there's some of those that need picked. It's a lot of cucumbers. I'm really happy, but man, it's a lot. So the first thing I see is two Amana orange. This one's a little under, but it has blush. So I'm gonna go ahead and pick it. It's supposed to rain tonight. And then this one was cat faced. You can kind of see on the bottom, but I don't think it's rotten. This tomato 
you can kind of tell from the top that this was actually two tomatoes that have fused into one. This is what we call cat facing. Um, so you can see where the blossom was here and that's why it looks kind of gross. I don't think this is rotten on the inside. So basically what I'm gonna do is just cut this part out and then I think the rest of it's gonna be totally fine. But this is a really good example of cat faced tomato because you can see this is the bottom of one of the tomatoes and this is the bottom of the other tomato. So this is just something that happens uh, it happens more with heirloom varieties than like in on hybrids because the hybrids are bred to not have that happen as much um, if I grab this other one you kind of see the bottom of it you know has the little thing and then these both each have that so that's what indicates to me that this was a cat-based tomato, and it's fine. Um, sometimes they will just be like monstrously large, and you'll have one half that ripens, and the other half is still completely green. And in that situation, it's hard. And I actually have one of those come off of my carbon plant um like a week ago maybe a week and a half two weeks ago and it was a double but it had one larger tomato and then one smaller one and the smaller one just did not ripen it just was completely green the other half ripened and was beautifully ripe and ready to go and the smaller one was still just totally green so basically what i did was i just cut off that smaller one and i just ate the bigger one so just keep that in mind. If you have a cat-based tomato and you notice that one part of it is ready, go ahead and pick it and cut off that unripened part because otherwise you run the risk of losing that nice ripe tomato. And I don't know about you, but I don't really like left. I don't really like losing tomatoes if I can keep from it. So this is a very good example of a cat-based tomato. And you can kind of see from the top, like the stem is kind of smashed in between the two tomatoes so yeah if you've never seen a cat faced tomato or you've wondered why some of your tomatoes look like that that's what it is it's not a big deal there's nothing wrong with it it's just something that happens in nature um especially with heirlooms so yeah fun fact i am picking these at first blush right now this is another amana orange and it's just starting to turn um but i have had one tomato get attacked by a bird when it ripened, so I'm picking them. And I just picked, I realize you can't see what I'm doing over there. I just picked my first two um, triple crop. Again, picking them before they're totally ripe, but they'll ripen up in a couple days on the counter. These are a red tomato. Um, they have a really nice flavor and they were actually a favorite of my grandpa last year and my plant last year didn't make it through the move so but he really loved it and so i thought okay i grew some for him again this year and i thought i'm gonna plant another one so these are my first ones they are not huge they can get much bigger than this these are you know not huge but they are really good, so happy to have these. So here's two Aunt Ruby's German Greens. Um, these are probably my favorite tomato. Just They're just so good. Um, this one has split, but that's okay. It's scabbed, so. I'm not concerned about it. Um, the way that you tell on a green tomato when it's ripe is you just give it a little squeeze on its little bottom. These, this big one is not totally ripe. You can kind of see on the bottom, it's more ripe over here than it is over here. This one may, this one probably was cat-faced. Um, but 
I don't know about all green varieties, but on this one, the Aunt Ruby's German Green, the way that I tell these are ripe is I just give them a little squeeze. So they'll feel kind of soft. You don't want them to be squishy because then they're probably overripe. But on these specifically, they will get a little bit of a pink blush on the bottom. I don't know if you'll even be able to see that. But the bottom of the tomato right here is just a little bit pink. And that's what you're looking for when you pick these. These are so unbelievably delicious. Better than any other color of tomato I've ever had. I bought these seeds two years ago and I let my emotions get the best of me when I added them to my cart because my great grandma's name was Ruby. I have her handwriting here on my shoulder and we lost her in 2015 and I spent so much time with her as a kid and I just, she's one of the best people I've ever met in my life. And so when I saw that these existed, I was like, well, I have to have them. You know, they were in the Baker Creek catalog and they had this really big full page feature on them. And I was like, well, yep, growing those. And I am so glad I did because they are so good. So thank you, Mamma Ruby, for making me buy these seeds because I, I, mm, they're just so good. If you are looking for a green tomato to try, I like to grow a rainbow of tomatoes. If you are looking for a green one, I highly suggest the Aunt Ruby's German Green. So I did not find any more ripe Aunt Rubies, but I did find another really good example of a cat face tomato. And I probably should have pulled this one off, but honestly, I didn't see it. Um, this is a triple crop and it looks like this. So, you can see here what I'm talking about when I say that part of it ripens and the other parts don't. So, looks like something's been in this. Like there's like a big bad spot right there. Um, I'll take this in, but I very well may put it in the compost or feed it to the worms um, because by the time these two portions ripen, this portion will probably be bad. So. This is a cat face tomato that I probably should have picked off. Um, anytime there's more than like two blossoms, I try to pick them off, but sometimes I forget or I miss them like this, so. Picking a couple San Marzanos, but some of them have blossom end rot and I've never had a San Marzano get blossom end rot like that, so. That's interesting. I've never had that happen before. I have had it happen with like Romas, um, but I've never had it happen with a San Marzano. Um, I realized I had the camera off, but I just picked my first four beans of the season of the year. Three rattlesnakes and one Marvel of Venice. So I have a, a bag in my freezer where I just kind of throw beans before I get like enough to do anything with them. So these are gonna go in that bag. Um, let me grab the basket. All right, so the baby's getting full. Look at this. That's what I call a harvest basket. So, we're gonna go over to the peppers and I think there will probably be some that need picked. Um, I see some color, so let's take a look here. Okay, so I picked a little handful of shishitos. I picked one lemon spice jalapeno and whew, I almost fell. I found this laying on the ground. So um, we're gonna take this too. It's not like, it hasn't turned color, but a green bell pepper 
is better than no bell pepper. So, added that to the basket. Here we are. So, I was thinking about digging potatoes tonight, but our basket's pretty full. Um, so I think maybe I'll wait and do that tomorrow. But I'm really happy with this harvest. This is probably the biggest harvest I've gotten off of the garden. That doesn't count like when I dig potatoes or when I pulled up the onions or when I pulled up my carrots and stuff like that. Um, so yeah, I'm pretty happy. Um, I know I've said that the garden is like a jungle this year, and it is, and it's true, but I'm owning up to it because it's still growing food. It's growing a lot of food. This basket, I mean, you know, it's big. It's a big basket, <laughs> and it's pretty much full of food. So I, so, okay. If you are a first time gardener, you may, you may not know what to do with your stuff after you bring it inside. Um, for tomatoes and stuff like that, I usually just sit them on the counter or on, I have a table where I do my coffee. That's where I keep my tomatoes. I just sit them there and then as I want to use them, I just grab them, then I wash them and use them. Cucumbers, I put in the fridge. Um, I put them in like our vegetable drawer in the fridge and then pull them out as I need them and wash them. Sometimes I'll wash them before I put them in the drawer, but let's be honest, most of the time I don't. <laughs> I usually just do a quick rinse before I um, slice them up or do whatever with them. Um, what else did I pick? Peppers. Peppers go straight in the vegetable drawer in the fridge as well. They will last so much longer if you put them in the refrigerator. Um, what else did we pick tonight? That's pretty much it. So. That's how I do those things. Cherry tomatoes I just put in a bowl on, a ta on the table. Um, and that way they're not rolling all over the place. So that is how I harvest and then store my produce before I eat it or before I put it up. Um, these tomatoes, if I get overrun with tomatoes, I will wait till they get super ripe and then I'll cut them and put them in the freezer to can later. Um, I usually can tomatoes after the tomato season is over for me, so like in the fall, that way I don't have to say, oh, I have to can again, because I just picked another, you know, basket full of tomatoes. I will have all my tomatoes in the freezer or fresh where I can can them like that. So um, I do have a video about how I made like spaghetti sauce and I canned it. Um, I can put a link to that up in the corner and down below. Um, but I have really taken to just canning them as like diced tomatoes essentially um and i will show you how i do that this year i realized i haven't done that yet and i will show you how i do that it's super easy um it's very beginner friendly it just uses a water bath canner so you don't need anything fancy so anyway um it might rain so i'm gonna go put my produce in the house and wash the tomato tar off my hands um and yeah so it's good to be out in the garden and I'm glad to be doing harvesting videos. I love doing these videos. So thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next one.